Hi everyone, today I've got a pretty much full face of makeup using disappointing products. I love watching these videos because I like to know what doesn't work for people and a uh, usual disclaimer, just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you. It might be your favourite product so please don't take offence. I'm not bashing any brands, it's just things that don't work for me. There's a lot of things, like a lot of brands here that I love their products and there's just some things that just don't work. So I hope you enjoy this video, just keep watching to see this makeup look. So I'm just starting with this Maybelline Baby Skin Silicone Base Primer which is the Instant Pore Eraser. It says it's a lightweight primer for smooth, poreless looking skin. The reason I'm not really a fan of this one is because it's just really, really silicone-y. So I don't know, like obviously you'd expect that for a silicone base primer but this one just feels so, so slippy that I feel like it's just going to make any makeup on top slip and slide all day. So I'm just putting this in the usual places like my nose and cheeks. So it does feel really really soft but as I say just too slippy for anything to actually stick or that's what I feel like um, when I wear this one. So I'm going to apply some foundation now and I'm going to be using this dupe of the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. Now it's funny because this one is part of the two pack of the Primark sponges that I mentioned in my favourites. The other one is blue and it's kind of like a, I suppose like a figure of eight shape and I love that one. But this one is your typical dupe sponge, it's really hard. I run underwater and it hasn't really expanded and it's still got quite a lot of water within it. And the foundation I'm going to be applying, sadly, is the Laura Mercier Silk Cream Foundation. This is the old packaging and the old formula. Um, I got this one and I'd heard such good things about it and at first, when I first put it on, I loved it, but it just doesn't wear well on me at all. The colour match is really, really good, but I find that it shows a lot of texture on my face throughout the day and it breaks me out, I'm pretty sure. So I want to use it though because it was expensive, so I'm kind of willing to put up with that just to use up the product because I don't want to um, waste it. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit straight onto the sponge and like you can see as well that is a totally thick formula too. So I'm just going to apply this as normal. <laughs> can you hear that it's like hitting your face with something very hard. <laughs> oh god it makes such a funny sound so that's why I don't like this sponge at all. After this video I'm just going to throw this away because there's no point keeping it and it was so cheap as well. So as you can see I know I look ghostly pale and um, I'm using natural daylight so it's kind of washing me out a bit as well but it is a really really good colour match for me. It's just the texture once it settles just isn't my favourite at all. Okay looking at this up close, if you can see with the primer. I don't know if it is a combination of the primer and the foundation. I have got some dry skin in my nose at the moment as well. That looks awful. Just highlighted every single dry bit of skin on my face. Which is not great. I meant to apply this. This is the Paw Paw um, Manuka Honey all in one balm I think it is. I picked this up at Urban Outfitters, you know you get all the things at the till and it says it soothes, relieves and moisturises for dry, chapped lips and irritated skin. So I've only used this on my lips but I just find that this actually dries my lips out like crazy. Like ooh. any bit of moisture I've got on my lips gets sucked dry when I put this on. So it's like a petroleum jelly type um, consistency. That's part of the reason why I don't actually like Vaseline. It doesn't actually moisturise your lips, it just provides a barrier on top. So I didn't realise when I bought this that it was the same kind of consistency as a petroleum jelly. Um, but yeah, I, I put this on and then like five minutes later my lips just feel so, so dry. Okay, moving on to concealers and things. I've got a few. I've actually got, um, this Vichy Derma Blend, it's like a foundation, it's called a cover cream and it looks like this and it's just a really hard uh, consistency as well so I do find it quite hard to blend out in the skin. But for it being Vichy and Derma Blend, 
this I, i've mentioned this before but i don't know what it is if it's my skin or just i'm really not finding products that cover anything but as you would have seen i've got quite a few post blemish marks on my skin my skin because it's so fair really shows up the marks it's quite red and i try and use this and it's just it just doesn't cover it so i don't get it and um, it's quite a dry formula too so even though my skin is mainly oily it does show up a lot of texture so i was quite disappointed in this one so that's why i've not used that much although it is spf 30 which is good so i definitely couldn't use this as a foundation on my face so it's far too dry for that well i'm going to talk about this nyx concealer um high definition concealer in the shade light and it's not actually the formula of this concealer it's quite nice it's the fact that the shade light is not light so oh and that's just happened great um but this one i'll maybe just use it under my eyes but you will see the shade light is very very orange so can you see that that is just so orange for the shade light um, as I say, it's not actually the concealer itself. The consistency is nice. I like the concealer. It's just the shades. So I'm going to have to see if there's a even paler shade, like a fair, um, yeah, just a lighter shade in that concealer. But I'll just use the same sponge to blend this out. Oh my God, that's so orange. I mean, it's got slight peachy tones, I suppose, for correcting under eyes, but that isn't what I expected from a light concealer. And actually, speaking of orange concealers, I mentioned in one of my empties the Maybelline under eye concealer that was again in the lightest shade and it was just pure orange so I just got rid of that before I even finished it because it's just so, so orange. So it's blended out okay, but well, you can still see the, it's definitely not the right colour for me. Um, hello? Beth? He just barges the door open with his head most of the time. <laughs> so other concealers that I have been disappointed in is the Smashbox one. Now Smashbox, I don't have a lot of products because they are a high-end brand, but this one is 24-hour spot concealer. It's a CC concealer, and it's supposed to obviously cover spots for 24 hours. Are you dead? Um, I find that this doesn't cover spots or blemish marks for 24 minutes. So I just... I'm quite disappointed in that. I got the lightest shade fair. The shade is fine. Um, but another thing I don't like is the <laughs> just while Ted takes a little water break there. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's very loud. Uh are you quite done, Teddy? Good boy. Okay, bye. So I think I don't like about this as well is the packaging. I think it just has a kind of pointy wand type thing here and it's just very unhygienic because if you put it in your hand and then you know use a brush your fingers, it dries so quickly that by the time you put it in your hand and then go to even just pick it up with your fingers, it's dry so I can't, it's not very malleable, malleable. Um, but this, and again, I just find it quite unsanitary to put it directly on your face, but that's how I have to do it most of the time because as I say, it's so quick drying that you can't really transfer it from one thing to the other. So I'm just going to pop it on pretty much everywhere where I have blemishes at the moment. So as I said, you can see it's a good colour match for me. It's very, very fair, but it just doesn't cover. And for the price, I find that quite disappointing. It'll be okay at first, but then after two minutes, it'll just all wear off, which is a shame. As you probably know, I love e.l.f. brushes. The studio brushes are great quality, or the heads of the brushes are great quality. However, uh, they just look like this. This brush in particular, I don't like. Um, kind of my own fault because it's just the shape of it. I picked this up in my e.l.f. haul, and when I tried it at the time, I didn't like it. It just kind of put a stripe on my face, so I don't find much use for this brush. But just talking about e.l.f. brushes, I am quite disappointed in the fact that pretty much every single studio brush I own, um, <clears throat> the ferrule comes away from the handle. And I super glue them back together, but that's kind of not the point. And I know they are cheaper brushes too, but they shouldn't be cheap quality. So 
I love, as I say, the actual brushes themselves are great quality. They're so soft and they most of them don't shed and they've just been really great. However, as I say, the ferrule always comes away from the handle, which is really annoying. And it's not the way I wash them either because I always take care to make sure the ferrule doesn't get wet, to dissolve the glue, and I wash all my brushes the same and these are the only ones I have problems with. So, yeah, I'm just not, um, not a fan of those. The fact it does that but i do love the brushes so i do still buy them because i love the actual brushes just not the way the handle and the ferrule are glued together but since i'm not a fan of this brush i'm going to use it for contour today i'm going to be using the 17 define and conquer contour kit it would have been cool if it was called define and contour but you know um so this one just looks like this, like your typical contour and highlight shade. But the problem I have with this is that there's absolutely no pigment. And it's quite chalky and patchy and just doesn't look good on the skin. And again, it is slightly more warm toned, which I suppose is maybe my own fault for picking that up. But they're just very, very... Um, just patchy and powdery and just not very good. So I'm going to use the brush and the contour shade first. I think you're supposed to use this brush like this to fit in with your cheekbones. So I'm going to do that just now. See how patchy that is. It's also probably to do with the brush because I don't like this brush but Oh, it just looks terrible. So, try and blend out a bit, but it's just really patchy and not good. No, I just don't like it at all. You see, there's nothing coming off there as well. And when it does, it just doesn't blend well. It just looks really bad. And this brush is just useless, the shape of it is just, you know, not good. I thought I would try it because it's not expensive, but I know now I don't like this shape of brush for contour. The highlight's kind of the same, it's just very meh. I'm going to use this e.l.f. fan brush, although I do love this, so it's not a disappointing product. Nothing. I know I'm very fair, but this is a very uh, light highlight and it doesn't show up at all. Which is great, so that's that. So moving on to blush, I've got this Bourjois Rose, uh, Jasper Rose blush, just their classic little pot one. And I thought this was going to be quite a good dupe for like Benefit Coralista or something. But again, just hardly, I mean barely showing up with any pigment so that's why I don't like that nothing absolutely nothing and for for it not to shop on me I'm really 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 pale yeah that's why I don't know if I need to scrape the top of this off because it is a big product but just just nothing Nothing happens at all. Right, so moving on to the rest of the face. Um, I've got quite a few eyebrow products, unfortunately. There's just a lot that I'm just not very agreeable with. Um, the first one is this random one by the band Silk. I don't know. My mum actually bought this and didn't like it, so she wanted to see if I, you know, would like it. And I don't. So I don't know what brand this is or where it's from, unfortunately, but I wanted to mention it because... It's in the shade light and it's just like the messiest thing ever. It's all powder fibres. You can see that. And it's just so messy and oh, you put it on your eyebrows and it's so so dark. And then all the fibre bits. It's not even fibres like the Benefit Gimme Brow, it's just actual like little bits that just fall out and fall everywhere and all over your face. Like you see that on my finger. Don't know if you can, but yeah, oh, it's just the messiest product ever. I'm also going to mention the NYX Eyebrow Gel in 01 Blonde, and this is waterproof. And again, it's just 
maybe my own fault for picking this up but I'm just not a fan of like the way to apply this I like to be quite simple and straightforward with my eyebrows this is a gel which again is very dark and um yeah it's very dark and it dries so so quickly that I find it really hard to work with like by the time you put this in your hand you get your brush in it'll be dry and so it just doesn't just doesn't work very well at all for me the one i'm going to use today though is the rimmel brow this way in the shade um it doesn't really have a shade 5154 said in the bottom but basically it's the blonde shade so this is just a brown mascara <coughs> oh bless me and it just looks like your typical brown mascara but the problem is that the wand is so saturated with product it's just like I have to spend about 10 minutes scraping off all the product to um, just get oh it's just so gloopy and just too much on the brush I think if they made the opening smaller it would have helped scrape off the product as you take it out but this honestly it's just like you keep going keep going keep going So that's probably the best I'm going to get now without spending all day but there's just far too much product on the brush there and then when you put it on first of all the, the brush is uh, too big I think so as you can see it's just got all over my skin and it's also really quite dark for a blonde shade so it's just really hard to be precise oh that looks terrible <laughs> um, So yeah, you have to spend so much time, first of all getting the product off the wall and then getting the product off the rest of your face. So that's why I don't like this one. And it's it's very, it's a very wet formula as well. So next up I'm going to mention this Benefit Cream Eyeshadow in Bikini Teeny. This is one of the ones I got in one of the sets you get. Um, it's a beautiful colour, champagne colour. The problem I have with this is that it's marketed as a creaseless concealer and this is probably the most creasy concealer. Um, concealer? eyeshadow um yeah it's marketed as a creaseless eyeshadow and this crease is like crazy on me so that's why i don't like the sun so i'm just gonna take a eyeshadow brush so just apply it to my eyelids so as you can see it's a beautiful color but it's actually quite patchy as well it just i think for the price the fact it's also marketed as creaseless and it's not that's why i'm disappointed by this eyeshadow i'm going to move on to this oh i forgot just with that being an essence product um i need to set my face and for that i've got this essence all bit matte fixing powder so as you can see it's all broken up and that's part of the problem is that when you swirl your brush in it all falls falls away and crumbles so you lose half the product anyway um, the packaging just gets really really dirty and again Essence is quite a cheap brand like shouldn't be oh fantastic it's just broken um, so yeah as you can see it's all broken and it's a white powder but and I like white powders because um, if my foundation goes on too dark I quite like them to actually lighten that up a bit but it doesn't come off white but I don't know if you can see as well it's actually got me it's got makeup on it from when I've used it before obviously the transfer so it's just it's just not a good consistency it's very dry I, I don't find it mattifies my skin at all and look at that what is that um yeah I don't find that it works in the slightest and again I'm not kind of bashing essence or anything they've got some really good products this isn't one of them M moving back to eyes this Essence Black Eyeliner. Um, I have never used it and look at the size of it. And that's because whenever I've tried to sharpen it, it just doesn't sharpen at all. The wood splinters and just, it's like half the size that it was when I bought it, having never used it. Put it on the top lash line. And there is no pigment either. Oh, look how patchy my eyeshadow is. It 
this is not good. You see that's really like faint and not not very black. It's just really really hard. Um it's just a really hard pencil. Oh nope. I'm getting rid of that after this video. So mascara, any e.l.f. mascara is not good. Picked up a few in my last haul. This is the eye enhancing mascara. It's got a funny like caterpillar like wand and it just does absolutely nothing. So I wouldn't recommend any e.l.f. mascaras. But this one from Revlon is the all-in-one um, mascara and I had this in my collection to start using when I ran out of my Maybelline set last year. Maybelline Lash Sensational, which I just have. So I went to open this the other day. I've had it for a while though. And I opened it and I was like, what is this? Look at the size of that. It's like the tiniest, weirdest shaped wand ever. It's got like a little dent in the middle and I knew I wouldn't like it as soon as I saw it. But when I put it on, I didn't like it. So it's a very, very, very wet formula. I know I've just opened it so I could leave this dry out, but I just find that it takes so long because the, the wand is so small that um, it just is so much more work. So it's supposed to be an all-in-one, like lengthening, volumizing, separating. And it's okay for that, but I think it's because my lashes are long anyway that most mascaras are, you know, pretty good on me but this one I just don't like see they do look quite long but I just don't oh, don't like the wand and I don't like the formula don't worry I'll go back and get that bit when it's dry I feel like it's a bit clumpy as well and just not my favourite. So lastly, we're on to lips and I do still have this pawpaw on my lips but it just doesn't feel moisturising in the slightest so I'm just going to take off the excess. Oh look how patchy this all looks. Oh. I mean it's kind of proving the point that's why it's disappointing but I'm not having a good makeup day. So for lip liner, I'm going to be using some Max Factor Color Elixir Lip Liner. And again, it's not actually the formula or anything like that. It's the color, which is probably my own fault. This one is in the shade 02 Pink Petal. And on the hand, it looks like it'd be pigmented and show up. But on the lips, it just doesn't create enough like definition. It just kind of blurs. It just doesn't really show up. Um... it's just nothing it doesn't it's not like it's a very very soft pencil so it doesn't actually create a sharp line you see it's just so so soft it's not actually just blurring the edges so I feel like it just is pretty pointless to be honest it's way lighter than my like natural lip color as well so again maybe just you know, my fault for the colour option, but... Just nothing. Doesn't work. Does not work. And then lastly, I've got this Topshop Lip Bullet. This is in the shade Crave. And it looks like a beautiful peachy pink colour. Pretty much matches the lip liner. But the reason I don't like this is because it's one of these ones that gives the worst, like, dry white lines after you wear it, and not even for that long. So, going on is fine. Nice colour. It's basically a very short wear lipstick. Because after a while, it will. I've worn this on a night out and it's just looked awful after like half an hour. And when you try and apply it, it just goes really dry and I just don't like it. So I wouldn't pick up more of these lip bullets either. So from afar, it probably doesn't look that bad with the makeup. But if I come up close, you can see the eyebrows are really bad. The mascara actually looks okay, so I don't know, it's just not my favourite. 
eyeshadow's patchy, the liner's terrible. My skin looks really, really dry and cakey. This is so patchy. See, that's like a scar and the concealer hasn't covered it at all. There we go, look at my nose. not good oh actually I just want to mention this I know it's I wasn't like planning on just sticking to makeup but I've got this as well and I wanted to mention the Sally Hansen gel shine 3d top coat and I absolutely love the Sally Hansen quick try one in the red bottle that's my favorite holy grail one but this I just wanted to mention because you basically have to wait about a day like literally a day before you put this on otherwise your nail polish will just like smudge off you know if you like accidentally touch it and it'll all gloop off um, even if you wait a couple hours so like I painted my nails last night and then I had to put this on this morning just to make sure I didn't do that so just to mention that I mean I do like the Sally Hansen top coats normally but this one I wouldn't repurchase okay so that is my I suppose a full face of disappointing products makeup look um it's a shame no one wants to buy makeup they don't like but Things don't work out for everyone, especially here we can't return makeup or anything, so we'll just have to kind of pass it on to other people or get rid of it, I suppose. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Let me know if these are any like of your favourite products and how you get them to work for you. If I'm doing anything wrong, please let me know. But thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!